If your content isn't ranking, it's probably because it sounds too AI. I'll show you how to turn robotic text into natural human sounding content that Google actually trusts with the eight prompts I'm going to be showing you guys today. Now, very quickly, I have just searched what is Google's law on AI content for SEO and the very first bullet point which comes to no surprise, is focusing on quality and usefulness and not origin. So Google's ranking system rewards content that provides unique value and is helpful to users. The method of creation, whether it's human or AI, is not a primary factor. Now, this basically means that if you've got human content writers that you've hired, or if you are using AI, there is always the chance that you can produce bad quality content. Instead of looking at where the content is actually originated from, what Google actually tries to understand is if there is any usefulness or if there's any uniqueness to that actual article that's been produced. And that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today, how to take your four out of five article to a, a nine or a 10 out of 10 article. Also, if you haven't already, check out myseo.app. It's completely free. We've got podcasts on there. We've got a community section on there. We also have a live SEO course on there as well. It's completely free. As of recording this video, it is only live on iOS only. It will. It should be uh, live on Android later in November. Now, if you didn't know this already, ChatGBT and, and other content or AI content tools they do what's called footprinting. So they will usually leave um, a certain phrase or they'll continuously reuse the same word and styles within content. Now, if I've just done a search here on today's digital age, and if any of you guys have been doing SEO and using AI content writing tools for the past two or three years, you'll know that maybe like eight or nine months ago, this was a very, very commonly used phrase. Now it seems like it uses a lot more EM dashes. Um, and this is basically what footprinting is. As you can see here, a lot of people have complained about it. This person here has actually said, this is like the most commonly phrases that ChatGPT uses in our digital world in today's fast paced in the ever revolving landscape of so this is like a very common footprint, but there's also other types of footprinting as well. If you were to just go into ChatGPT now and say, can you write me a article to do with how to, how to build links for SEO, right? The, the issue you've got with this, and a lot of people think that this is like a SEO optimized article, in reality, it's actually far from it because if 20 other people go in and use the same prompt, it's going to come back with a very similar style article for every single website. So again, going back to what I was saying before and going back to what Google takes a look at, you're not bringing anything of value and you're not being that helpful because it's not something new. Now, I'm not saying that every single article you need to bring in a new element into the actual article, but there's ways that we can actually work that in with um, secondary and third prompts. So as you can see, all I've done is I've just copied the article over from Grammarly into, or sorry, from ChatGBT into Grammarly. And as you can see here, we have got a 66% confidence score that this is AI detected content. So the first prompt that I'm going to use is I'm going to actually make the article more entity centric. Right now, we're not mentioning um, as many entities that we would want. We've obviously got like Ahrefs, uh, Screaming Frog, but we can obviously improve upon this. So I'm just going to copy this prompt and I'm going to do, I'm just going to basically paste it in. For the people that are wondering what the actual prompt is, rewrite the following content to be more entity centric. Identify all people, places, brands, tools, and key concepts mentioned or implied and ensure each is clearly defined or contextually linked. Use entity rich phrases that connect the two related topics in the knowledge graph. And again, this is just going to come back saying, do we want a full rewrite? So we're just going to click on one. So this is going to rewrite our entire article. So it's just finished rewriting our article. And if we copy this into Grammarly again, 
And if we recheck the AI detection, it should have reduced. So we've went from 66% down to 45. Now, the reason why prompt number one is really important, the entity centric one, is that it tells Google exactly what we are talking about. So for example, we've mentioned Ahrefs' blog, we've mentioned Search Engine Journal, we've mentioned um, we've mentioned EAT. These are all different things to do with link building. We've even mentioned HubSpot, Neil Padel Digital, Google uh, Knowledge Vault. These are all things that are associated with link building and also SEO as well. So the second prompt that we can also use as well is answering questions completely and factually. Now, have we actually got any questions on this article? That's the first thing that we want to take a look at. We've not actually got any questions just yet. But what we can actually do is we can actually have um, a simple prompt like give me five FAQs to add into this article. And we're just going to do um, this next prompt. Now, the reason, again, why this is so important is because what a lot of um, SEO tools or SEO content writing tools do is they won't give you a direct answer. So in this case, a question that might be asked in an article to do with link building is how many backlinks do I need? Now, a lot of websites out there, they will just say, well, it depends on your website or well, it depends on your, on your industry. You would want to give a direct answer first. So you need 10 backlinks um, or you need a minimum of 50 backlinks, right? However, this does depend on industry. This does depend on the keyword that you're trying to rank for. So again, if we just copy all of these questions into our article down at the bottom. Again, all, all these questions are fairly um, accurate and it also helps the user as well. So that's the, that's the number one thing that you want to take a look at. So how many backlinks do you need to rank on Google? This is a very commonly asked question especially when people are trying to get into link building. Then you've got question number two, how long does link building take to impact SEO rankings? And again, if you take a look at the answer structure as well, on average, you can expect to see a measurable ranking improvement within two to three months. It never says it depends um, on what your competitors are doing, etc. You want to give the answer to begin with, the caveat after. Um, then we've got what makes a backlink high quality. Backlink is considered high quality when it meets these criteria. It comes from a relevant and authoritative domain, is contextually embedded, etc. Um, the next question is, is it better to build backlinks manually or use a link building service? So again, the most effective strategy combines both approaches. Um, then it goes into manual outreach and stuff like that. Can you rank on Google without backlinks? Technically, yes, but rarely beyond position 20. Again, this is then going into the caveat and also the studies that Backlink on Ahrefs have done. Both really good studies, by the way, if you guys haven't checked out, I highly recommend it. And I don't know if you guys were paying attention to the AI content detector. I'll just remove this for a second. We actually went from 45 down to 40. Um, so as you can see, without the questions, we're 45. Um, with the questions, we are 40. Now, this next one, we can actually um, copy our entire article over from um, Grammarly, paste it into here, and then use this next prompt, which is the semantic triple builder. Now, again, this helps feed LLMs. If you're trying to rank higher when it comes to... Um, AI overviews, LLMs, chat GBT, this is probably going to be the prompt that's going to help you the most. If you don't know what a semantic triple is, it's basically how LLMs actually read and understand what you're talking about. It's to do with tying together entities with subjects, predicates, and objects. So for example, we've got backlinks are a ranking signal in Google's algorithm. It's it's something factual. It's something that Google actually believes in. Now, this is basically broken down all of our um, all of the semantic triples that we can actually use throughout our our articles. 
So each section actually has a semantic triple. Now, what you can actually do is you can get it to, again, rewrite the article with all of the semantic triples included. So again, this is just completely redone the actual article. Um, it's helped increase the, the chance and the likeliness of it actually being pulled into AI overviews as well by using the semantic triples. And I've just pasted it into um, Grammarly here. And as you can see, the AI detection rate has also went down. Now, one thing that I will say is that there are multiple different prompts. Not every single prompt within this sheet will um, increase or decrease the um, AI detection rate. As long as it's not fully 100% AI detected, then you're off to a good start. But as you can see here, the, the content from where it was to begin with to where it is now, it's a lot easier to follow. It's actually, um, by default, it's, it's easy to skim read as well, which is, again, another important thing when it comes to um, writing content, especially for, for, for me anyway, I do like shorter sentences. And we've not actually specifically told it to use shorter sentences. We've just obviously used some of these prompts. Now, the next prompt that we're going to use is search journey continuity, con continuity, right? And this is really important because if you are ranking, let's say, position number one, and you don't cover everything in its entirety, right? Somebody might read your article to do with how to build links. And if they still have questions after reading this article, they're going to go back to the search engine results page, which is this page here, and they're going to go and click and read Ahrefs' blog, right? Now, that's a really bad factor when it comes to SEO because that directly tells Google that this person or these group of people have clicked onto your result at, at, or cl clicked onto your web page at result number one. They've not been satisfied and they've had to go back to the results page and click onto page number two. Now, the reason why this is really important is because it scans your entire content, it reads all of all, everything in, within your content and it tells you suggestions or it gives you suggestions of what pages that you should actually have and which questions you should actually have as well. Now, when you use this prompt as well, is it also gives you suggestions on other articles that you should have. Um, so, for example, we've got related, sorry, related um, learning paths. And then you've obviously got S, um, entity SEO. Then you've got digital PR versus link building as well, which again, most people, if they are reading to do with how to build links, after reading an article like this, they would definitely be interested in um, understanding why digital PR is important or what's the pros and cons to digital PR versus link building. And also they would probably be interested in AI overviews as well. And again, just pulling it into Grammarly, as you can see that the AI detected rate is down to 27%. We were at 66. We are now at 27%. Now, the next prompt here is the content brief optimizer. I'm not going to do it on this um, specific article because we've already got the content brief. This is more for like brand new articles, um, but I will still show you guys how that works. So again, we can just do copy that brief or copy that prompt, should I say, and then the article title is, is link building important. And this, again, a lot of the times it does create a, a fairly decent article brief or content brief. Um, but again, if you're able to combine it with like the search journey continuity, the semantic triple builder, the fo the, fo the fully answered questions, the entity centric rewrite, if you stack these prompts one after another, I know this does take a little bit longer than, than expected, but you will get a much better article um, when you start stacking your actual prompts. Then you've got the contextual fact enrichment. With this prompt, I won't actually use it on, on this article, but if you are writing articles to do with like medical industry or um, finance and stuff like that, I highly recommend using this prompt because it actually gives you places 
where you can get citations from. So what I mean by that is if you're if, if you're trying to say that um, tax rates are have, are going to increase in 2026, for example, Google wants to know where you got that information from. Is it something that you've just blindly made up or is it actually supported? This next prompt is again for when you're doing keyword research. So if we were going to be doing a article, so if we were going to be doing an article on how to save money on tax, this is like the um, prompt that I would use. So this is basically when you've just done your keyword research and you want to find out what kind of people are actually um, searching for this keyword. Because again, you're a then able to intent match your article. So this basically gives you like the goal of what that person wants, um, what the content angle should be. Should it be like an article? Should it be a guide? Should it be a um, checklist? That's basically what this does. It's not, again, it's not 100% for um, writing content, but it does give you a good angle of how you should be structuring your content as well. Then the last one here is self-corroboration loop. So this ensures every statement in this content can be corroborated by external sources. So again, if you are writing out an article to do with tax saving, um, this would be a really good one because it can then go out to what other people are saying on other websites and self-reference those websites on your website. Again, this last prompt is really good when it comes to LLM and trust signals. So I'm going to go back to the how to build links article and I'm just going to use that um, prompt here. And as you can see here, I've just copied it all from, from ChatGBT. And if we paste it into our um, Grammarly, as you can see here, we have been able to get a possible AI detection of 7%. So I think we started at around 60, 65%. We're now down to 7%. Now, there are obviously a few tweaks that you can make. Like, for example, it has started creating em dashes so you could do like a mass search and replace those with like spaces or commas or whatever but the actual article has become a lot more unique from where it first originally started from where again just as a final recap we are now a lot more entity centric we've answered questions fully we've got semantic triples we have actually took into consideration the search journey. So we're trying to keep people as long as possible on our website. Again, these are all things that if you were to just go into ChatGBT and say like, hey, write me an article on um, how to save tax, it's just not going to be able to, to do all of these things. In a lot of cases, once you start using AI and you start stacking um, all of these actual prompts one after another, that's when you're actually able to get a lot better output. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. And again, like what I said before, if you want access to the sheet, the link will be down below. Once you do get it, click on file and then make a copy for yourself. Um, it'll be sent to you via your email. So check that. And make certain to download the My SEO app. I'm going to be a lot more active on there. I've got a lot more live streams guide, um, lined up as well. Also, if you want to work with me, head over to casualdash.com, fill in the contact form and I will be in touch. Thank you for watching.